that we've shared with you are proof positive that being an organ donor can save lives. But we know nothing resonates as much as when it gets close to home. And our ABC family can attest to that firsthand. Hi, it's Robin, and I have been waiting 174 days to say this. Good morning, America. All of America watched as our colleague Robin Roberts of Good Morning America waged the fight of her life against a rare blood and bone marrow disorder this past year. Luckily, her sister was a match, but her story brought the need for bone marrow donors to the forefront. I hope going public health in that regard. I have to say, I was not aware of being able to donate with bone marrow and the need for that. Platelet donation, uh, blood donation, organ donation, bone marrow donation, all those things. And my mama said, make your mess your message. And I didn't want to stay private because it's very personal. But I realized that I and others are using our stories to, to just bring awareness. And that's all you have to, that's all you want to do. You just want to bring awareness and let people make those choices for themselves. I am so appreciative of people watching and heeding the call and, and saving lives. Like Robin, a young teacher from Brooklyn was lucky enough to have a relative be a match. Seven years ago, her dad was willing to give her part of his liver. I, I think it was a difficult decision, and especially for my stepmom and for my mom and my stepdad and my grandma, but I think you know, he was the one who was a match, and I'm very thankful that they made that decision. I started getting really sick um, about two weeks before I went to the hospital. I was completely jaundiced, so by the next morning I was on life support. The doctors told my family there wasn't enough time to wait for a cadaver liver, so they started um, testing people to be living donors, and they had to expedite the process for my family. Um, because there wasn't enough time. 60% of her father's liver was removed and grafted to Leon's. In about a year, both of their livers regenerated themselves. I lead a fairly normal life. <laughs> I feel really healthy, I feel good. Um, I work a lot. <laughs> I spend a lot of time with my kids, a lot of time um, in my classroom, working to help them. And I appreciate that a lot after being sick, like just the immediacy of life and how fun and joyous it can be. This has brought me much, much closer to my father. I feel like we have a really special connection, and I love him a lot. Now for an update. Last year, we told you about baby Aiden, as we came to call him. Born with a heart condition, he had his first open-heart surgery at just five days old. And by 17 months, a heart-lung machine was the only thing keeping him alive. Good cry, Aiden. The very first pediatric heart transplant took place right here at New York Presbyterian Columbia University Medical Center back in 1984. So he was in good hands, but even so, he was barely hanging on. Well, thanks to the generosity of the grieving parents of another toddler, Aiden received his heart. And 15 months later, this is Aiden today. <laughs> his heart transplant, his entire body just started to come to what a child should be, and, and he's so full of energy, he's so full of life, and I, I, oh God, I can't even express how oh my gratitude to the family member that think about donating and giving us, you know, our son back to us. So I know you don't know, you've never met the donor family before. Mm -hmm. If you've had the opportunity to meet them, what would you say to them? I, f I don't even know what I would say to them. I would just hug them. I would just hug and just keep saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because you don't know what you have done for us. Mm -hmm. Aiden's story has a happy ending. But for the Whiteman family, the wait for a life-saving heart goes on. I just refuse to to let this thing win. Um, you know, so mentally, it's just it's just part of my nature to... to uh, just keep going. Just, uh, just get up and go. I hope that um, we get that call soon. And um, we're able to move forward to look, you know, beyond today. Let's plan for the future. Let's live a life again. And we send Alex and everyone waiting for a transplant our very best wishes. 
And we thank you for joining us and urge you to open up a dialogue about organ donation with your friends and families and hopefully become connected for life. I'm Liz Chow. This presentation of Connected for Life is sponsored by New York Presbyterian Hospital. Amazing things are happening here.